Welcome to the boat shop, everyone. My name's Joe Buskins. I'm a second generation professional boat builder, full-time fishing guide down here on the Gulf Coast. This is the boat that we fish out of in our charter business. And you guys have probably been following us a little bit on the YouTube channel. A lot of how-to DIY type work. And we did a couple videos showing how to glass over plywood and then different fiberglass fabric selections. But I've had several of y'all have requested a video on how to gel coat just how to gel coat over raw fiberglass so this would be like if for example you're putting new stringers in your boat gel coat would more than likely be the product you would use now y'all will notice again wearing rubber gloves you've got raw exposed fiberglass fibers all through there and if you were to rub your hand without some protection back and forth over that you would have a handful of splinters so surface prep is really really important that's about how it should look in my opinion um, that's got all those rough seams and edges and kind of smoothed it down and what we're getting ready to do is we're going to be doing the gel coat in two coats generally two coats is going to be required to get full coverage and what we're using today Valspar makes just a wall and ceiling that's a 3 8 that's a 3 8 snap if I'm not mistaken yeah 3 8 snap works really really good now these are just kind of inexpensive you can buy them at Lowe's or Home Depot if you got something that's of a little higher caliber and you want to spend a little more money Corona makes the glass coaters that work really really good but for this smaller job we're just going to be using a small roller and you're like well man I've got the big roller in a small frame you guys follow me the solution to that is going to be the bandsaw be careful all right just like so the great way to take these big rollers sometimes it's hard to find the small ones in the profile you want and what we're doing here is knocking some of the excess hairs off of there i'm gonna show you guys a little trick take your compressed air if you got it I'll we'll spin it from the other direction. What that'll do, folks, is that'll knock a lot of those loose hairs off of there. You don't want a lot of loose fibers coming off of the roller because obviously that'll affect the quality of the finish. Now, again, if you're new to the channel, you probably haven't seen me do this before, but if You've been here a while you know i like to also do a two-phase i will take some of the blue tape start at one end and wrap it all the way give it a moment to stand and then we'll pull and a lot of times you can see there's some fibers that'll come off of there generally after you do that you've got a quality a quality roller that's going to hold up just fine for you so what we've got here folks of course we're just doing a sample this was a little bit of gray just base gray that i had for you guys this is the palent 944 a505 now we source this from our local advanced plastics um, we're down on the gulf northern gulf coast here in alabama but advanced plastics i believe has several locations all throughout the the southeast and this gel coat still looks good um it's not too thick it's not too thin what we're going to be doing but it has been sitting for a minute and it's at the bottom of the barrel so we're using just some uh, screen material like you would buy for rescreening your porch and i'm going to go ahead and run this a 
run some of this material through this screen. Sometimes you'll have some little lumps and bumps. And I'll be honest with you guys, usually gel coat is much thicker than paint. And a lot of times it is hard to get it to go through like your typical paint strainer. So just some screen from your local hardware store will do the job. There you go, got a little bit of that light gray. If you guys wanna know what color our new, our big 29 footer is, we use six parts of this light gray with one part black. So it's a six to one, seven parts total. And that is how we got the, uh, the gel coat for our new boat. So what we're doing here, y'all, today, gonna be mixing up. This should be enough to get one coat. Now I've got a little graduated mixing cup here and we're gonna be going for probably around eight ounces or so is all we're gonna need to get a first coat on there so you can see there's eight ounces right there we've already strained and filtered this holy moly how is that for <laughs> that's pretty good wasn't it logan pretty good guys um yeah i was just guessing at that but we landed right on or just maybe a smidge above eight ounces so i'm pretty happy with that now sometimes people wonder how much how much coverage do you get per quart or whatever but every brand of gel coat's a little different some goes a little further sometimes if the surface is a little rough it may take a little bit more gel coat um but you can always mix more. This stuff is expensive. A lot of times I'll mix it in small batches and we'll kind of go as we need. I hate, hate to waste it. Now as a general rule of thumb, around 11 to 12, 11 to 12 cc's of um, MEKP or catalyst, which that's what this is, generally about 12 cc's per quart. So that would mean you'd need about six cc's per pint or about three and a half, four cc's Let's call it four cc's for um, half a pint. And what I have it here is I have it mixed. There's actually five cc's is that first little mark. And we're just gonna squeeze. And I am gonna mix it a little on the hot side because I'm trying to get two coats on this afternoon. We've got some weather coming our way. And we are gonna mix that very thoroughly. And I'm gonna keep on mixing. Sorry about the compressor. Real world shop conditions, everybody. And y'all have seen me mix gel coat before and I'm gonna try to do this in kind of in real time. And of course, you can use a little drill with a mixer if you want, but I find that the little wooden sticks work quite well. And you wanna be sure to pull it off of the sides and really turn it. Generally, I'm gonna tell folks to mix it till you're quite sure it's mixed, and then mix it a little more. Now we're fortunate right now, temperatures are fairly cool. Matter of fact, come on over here. Logan, we've got right at 60, right at 60 degrees right now and we activated this catalyst it's right at 340 so 340 when we add the catalyst so we'll see see how this goes as far as cure time all right folks now again mix this very very thoroughly but generally after two or three minutes of mixing, you should be good. And something you wanna be very aware of is that gel coat, resins, epoxies, if you have them in a mass like this, they will cook. Basically, when the more you got in an in enclosed space, 
it will start an exothermic reaction. It'll start building heat. The more heat that it builds, the faster it cures, faster it cures, more heat it makes. So what you wanna do is after you've mixed, is we're gonna put it in a pan. And that pan is gonna spread this material out. Now you don't really have that exothermic reaction as long as you're mixing it as well. So it can be in a little cup like this, but you gotta be sure to keep turning it and mixing it. There we go. That should be enough for our base coat. And again, I mix this probably a little, a little on the hot side. And when I say hot, I mean a little more catalyst than you might add if you were doing a big, a big area and a big volume. I get some questions sometimes too. Yes, catalyst is the same as hardener and it's the same as MEKP, which is methyl ethyl ketone peroxide. That's the hardener for this stuff. And you do not want it on your skin. You do not want it on your eyes. It's not good for you. So this is looking pretty good. Now you guys have seen me use the heat gun a bunch. It is fairly cool right now. And we've got some cloud cover and I want this to go ahead and cure rapidly for you guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and warm this surface up a little bit. That way we're sure there's no moisture. There you go. Now this thing puts out an extreme amount of heat. So heat guns, you do have to be careful with them. If you're working around chemicals, obviously you would not want to expose the tip to highly flammable liquids. All right. Very good. Logan, zoom in on that surface a little bit. Turn those fans off for you guys. That's a little better, is it not? Okay, so of course you can use a brush if you want. Now that's just your inexpensive chip brush. And sometimes a brush works really nice in the corners. And a lot of times what we will do is when we're gel coating something, I will go ahead and get some in the corners and I will follow it with a paintbrush. Sometimes if you've got a lot of pinholes, a brush is the way to go. So you certainly, matter of fact, I'll do one side here and show you folks what you get as far as a result with just one coat of gel coat applied with a brush. A lot of times what we'll do is we'll just get some material on there and then I will come back and really dress it up a little bit. Sometimes just get the material there, get it everywhere. And this gray is real popular like in a lot of stringers, say engine rooms or if you're putting new stringers in a bilge area, the gray is really nice. It's kind of a good industrial look. Now you can also, of course, go back to our quality roller. And generally, you just want to get a nice even load on that. You don't want to underload it or overload it. And it's kind of one of those things that just comes from a little bit of experience. But well, you can see it's not dripping off of there. But there's definitely some material within that roller. And then you can come in here just nice and easy. And you can see the roller puts a slightly different texture on than a brush. I actually kind of like the roller finish. It's a little bit of an orange peel. Um, it's kind of a personal preference thing. If you do with just a brush, a lot of times you'll get the brush strokes or the lines in it. Now, if you're curious as well, we finished the whole interior of our big 29 custom hybrid bay over here. If you look at this surface up close, that is all rolled gel coat. Now here on the hull, this is molded gel coat. You can see that is slick and shiny. 
It is exactly the same gel coat from the same batch, same color. But when we built this, this was not molded and we just put a rolled finish on there and that's what you see. And then of course we did a bordered, a non-skid texture as well. But you can kind of see in the light here, rolled surface, brushed surface. Kind of a personal preference thing. No right or wrong necessarily. Sometimes what we will do is actually roll or rather brush a coat on to fill pinholes and then we will come back with the roller and put a uniform texture so kind of for example this was brushed and i'm going to follow it with the roller there and put a little textured finish on it so a lot of people wonder can you do it in one coat yes and no sometimes you can get it to cover in one coat but we almost always do two coats if you were trying to do it with just one sorry about that folks cell phone <laughs> if you're trying to do it with just one you would have to be sure to add your sanding aid to that first coat that is your modifier c that's your wax solution um that is going to what is going to keep it from remaining sticky but I can tell you right now that in most applications, it's better to go with two coats with the third, first one just being a good thin cover coat with no wax. And then in a little bit, I'm gonna show you, once this is tacked off, probably about 30 or 40 minutes or so, we'll be ready to come back with a second coat and I'll show you what the finished product looks like. So welcome back everyone. It is the next day. Uh, you guys saw us a little while ago and we were working in the afternoon, but we had some weather come through. You can see the shop. Uh, it's got some water in it so it rained on us so we just held on our first coat of gel coat we didn't apply the second coat but it took about an hour for it to tack off and uh, what we got now is one good coat on there but like what we were talking about last night if you zoom in really close there you can see that there are thin spots scattered all throughout and then you can see there are some little burrs and some little splinters and whatnot from that first coast coat so the solution to that, we're just gonna use the little 3M sticky block. And I've got an older, that's an 80 grit disc that we had used when we were fairing out the inside of our big 29 footer that's left over. And that is great for just basically skimming over. And you can see it just puts a very light texture. You can see where the sandpaper is hit. It's a little bit lighter in color. Now, this sand, this gel coat rather, does not have wax in it. So it's gonna be sticky and a lot of times it'll gum up your sandpaper like that and sometimes worse, but that's okay. That's one of the reasons we use this older sandpaper anyway, because you kind of expect it to get gummed up if you got another project you've been working on. Matter of fact, I've saved a whole, look at this, I've saved a whole tub of old discs from when we were sanding on the boat when we were fairing. Now, even like with these burrs here, you'll see that just a little bit, a little bit of sanding. And I think doing it with a block by hand is a better way to go. A machine can be a little aggressive and we're not really trying to remove any of the gel coat. We're just trying to knock some of the burrs off of there and i mean that just looks and feels better already spin this around same deal just going to take a quick minute and just knock some of the burrs off this will pay dividends this kind of stuff makes your job look so much better if you just take a few minutes and again obviously wearing a mask would be a good idea at this point I do it because I do it this way because you guys can hear me and see me better. But this is always also a good time to ask you guys if you're enjoying the content we've been putting out, all the how-to as far as gel coat repair and uh, fiberglass work. Hit that subscribe button, give us the like, share, tell a friend. The more people we have watching the videos and the more subscribers we have, the more of this kind of stuff I can do. So you guys can't do it without y'all support and I wanna thank everybody that has been following us. So here we go, just a little bit more. Just a little bit more. And again, you could do this with a power tool if you wanted to, maybe a little orbital sander. But honestly, I think 
a block and paper like this is the way to go. And again, you can see that there's going to be some gel coat gummed up in there, but that is normal for gel coat that does not have wax in it. So I'm using the heat gun here. And y'all will notice today I've got a jacket on. It's holding it about 58 degrees. So it's a little on the chilly side. It's probably a little cooler than I normally like to do gel coat work. But even though it rained last night, we've got really nice sunshine and we got low humidity outside. We've just had a little cool front come through. And that's actually pretty good conditions for gel coating. And I'm going to use the heat gun and I'll use this a lot throughout the channel. Use it carefully. Again, obviously it puts out a lot of heat, but you can kind of warm up these surfaces prior to applying the gel coat. And another trick you can do is set it out in the sun. UV light really, really activates it. But super important to remember, when you're applying it, I would recommend not doing it out in the sun because it's going to really accelerate the cure of this stuff. So I would recommend doing it in the shade. And if you want to accelerate the cure, if it's kind of cold in your shop, you can put it out in the sunlight and it's going to definitely help this cure along a little bit. But that looks good. Um, I am pretty happy with that. And that is what your pre prepped surface should, you look, should look like. Now, if y'all remember last night, we did, we got just a touch over eight ounces in this little cup. Last night, that was about the right amount for painting this or gel coating this. So we're going back with the same amount. And since it's a little bit colder than it was last night, I'm gonna go back with just a touch more. You can see we got this little metered catalyst dispenser. We're gonna go just a touch over five cc's, which again is pretty warm. That's a pretty good amount of catalyst. If you were doing a bigger batch, you probably would not wanna put that much. But since we're doing a small batch, and it is cold or on the cold side that's going to be okay for you guys and again a very 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 thorough mix you're going to want to spend several minutes activating this and with the cooler weather you can do that when you get in the summer months honestly when temperatures get over about 80 degrees 85 degrees gel coat work gets tricky because you've got just a handful of minutes before this stuff starts to thicken up and man it can create a real mess. So the spring and fall, or even down here on the coastal south, the winter months can be a real good time to do this kind of work. And again, a very, very thorough mix. Generally, again, catalyst ratios around one to 2%. Smaller batches, you can go a little bit more catalyst. And if it's colder, you can put a little bit more catalyst. Now, this is something I get a lot of questions on is the sanding aid, the sanding aid or modifier C wax solution. So this is the second coat. Matter of fact, the wax will even thicken inside this can. And sometimes when it's cold, I will warm up the can or set it in the sun a little bit so that that wax gets dispensed within the the base, which is typically, if I'm not mistaken, it's just a styrene base for this stuff. And uh, I generally go two or three times the amount of modifier C as I do catalyst. Um, I have found, for the most part, there doesn't really seem to be a problem with going heavy. And you can see this almost pours out thick and has like a waxy look to it. That's because there is wax dissolved. When it's cold, you'll actually see the wax floating on the surface. When the weather is, uh, is hot, it will go almost perfectly clear, like gin clear. I'm gonna add just a touch more because I want this to be 100% tack free. So nearly a cap full in about eight ounces. And that's gonna be on the heavy side as well. But again, I've done this so many times and I, I've, I haven't really seen a problem with going a little on the heavy side as far as your wax additive. Now remember, in my opinion, activating the gel coat first is a good idea and then 
adding the modifier C seems to work really, really well. And again, a very, very, very thorough mix. I know it probably seems overkill, but I've done this hundreds and hundreds, probably thousands of times, and seen issues when it's under-mixed, when it's under-catalyzed, and, and a big problem when you don't put enough modifier C as far as it curing tack-free. Now, you guys have seen me on some of the other gel coat repair videos as well. Sometimes you can actually use a plastic film, like if you're doing a gel coat repair on a little small pinhole, you can use like a clear plastic film or there is another chemical called PVA or polyvinyl alcohol that you can spray over the gel coat and it creates an air barrier. This gel coat is not like paint. It doesn't air dry. It actually chemically cures and exposure to air actually causes the surface to remain tacky. So, all right. And you guys had seen last night, we had already uh, prepped one of these little rollers. This is just a Valspar brand I got at Lowe's and I find again a 3 8 nap. Seems to work really, really good. I feel comfortable with the mix we have here. And I'm gonna transfer this right on over to a pan with a liner in it. And you can buy these disposable liners. Maybe my cameraman there can pan around and so those, once again, they come from Lowe's. They're just the disposable liners and they do a nice job. A lot of times I will put a fresh liner in when we're going from batch to batch. There we go. Sometimes that first initial loading of the roller can be a little, a little tricky. And we've got our little chip brush as well. Y'all may have seen us use that last night. You always want to be sure there's no loose hairs in that as well. These are inexpensive and they work great for gel coat for the most part, but sometimes they will lose a couple hairs. And again, a lot of times I will start in the corners and you can see already how much better, just that little bit where you've got the second coat. Again, a lot of people ask if you can get away with just one coat and honestly, it's, it's hard to do. The quality of the job is just not gonna be there. I highly recommend and that is a good comparison there. You can see how much better two coats look than one. Same, same here. You can see those little thin spots just going away. Gel coat is quite thick as well. It'll fill in quite a few of those, those pores. Make it look really, really nice. All right. And one reason we use the brush sometimes too is because the roller has trouble getting right down in the corner sometimes. So here we go with the... Multiple passes. You'll see me go back and forth, back and forth. Sometimes we'll get a coat on there, let it stand for just a minute and we'll come back and fine tune it a little bit, make sure Sometimes you can take the roller and dab right into the corner like that, but we're not trying to just stack it on there, pile it on there. It's better to go with multiple, multiple thin coats, in my opinion. All right, and we got a little better light, a little better light on this side, but again, you can see that porosity and those holes in the gel coat. And man, that second coat really, really brings it around. Now gel coat, when you roll it like this, is never going to really look like paint. It is going to dry kind of flat and with a little bit of a texture to it. You can wet sand it and polish it out if it were, um, if you wanted to try to re-gel coat a boat. But boy, it's a lot of work to do it that way. Um, most boats come out shiny because they're molded and the mold is really shiny and you get that nice surface. But that is typically what gel coat that's rolled on. Now again, some people may prefer a rolled or a roll and tip method and you can actually roll it on there and take your brush and smooth it out. They call that a roll and tip. 
And with a higher quality brush, it would be smoother than this. But the problem is you can see it leaves those little lines in the gel coat. And again, this is not a high quality brush, but most of the time when you're doing something like this, it's down in an engine compartment or down in the bilge or something. And uh, cosmetics are kind of secondary. But what we're gonna do, we're gonna give that probably about an hour or so and what's going to be interesting is right now it looks shiny and slick but when it cures with the wax additive in it it should dry to like a flat finish and that's why you know you got a good tack free surface so we're going to give this just a little while to warm up sometimes i will even use a heat gun but again i've done this lots and lots of times sometimes you can use a heat gun just to throw a little warmth that way and when it's colder weather especially on a smaller job sometimes that'll help you go ahead and accelerate the cure a little bit so i'm going to warm this thing up give it a little while and i'll show you guys the finished product here in just a bit so check it out everybody a couple hours have actually passed and i hope you guys can see it but you can see this gel coat is starting to flatten out and this is actually the side that we did with just the brushed finish and then you can see over here this is the roller finish and it is still curing because it's quite cool today like i said 60 degrees is kind of right on the edge of what we typically do as far as fiberglass work but um i'm pretty pleased with how that turned out that would be great for an engine compartment or uh, if you're replacing a transom very important to remember too if you're working with epoxy gel coat and epoxy aren't compatible you can epoxy over gel coat but you can't put gel coat over epoxy so if you've done your repair with epoxy, just keep that in mind. And if you guys are finding our videos helpful, we want to do a whole bunch more of this, but we can't do it without y'all support. If you got a friend or a family member that enjoys boat related projects and fishing content, man, the views and the watch time subscribing to the channel help us to do a whole lot more of this. Feel free to comment down below. Ask me questions. We want to help you guys get your projects done and get them done right. It's Captain Joe here with Island Marine Charters. Fish Bump TV here on YouTube. And as always, we will catch you guys next time out.